So this is the March 2022 edition of what I've been writing with lately. This is the series in which I talk about the pens and pencils that I've been using lately. These aren't reviews or recommendations. It's just what's been on my desk or in my bag. I will note that I didn't do one of these videos last month. Just uh, timing wise, it didn't work out. So uh, I'm only going to focus on the March 2022 pens right now. This isn't going to be some uh, double edition or anything like that. So let's jump right into it. These are the pens and pencils that I've been using lately. In this case, it's really been pens this month. And it's been a very eclectic mix because I've been doing some traveling and uh, things have just been generally kind of busy. So I've been a little bit all over the place with my writing. First up, I have these pens right here. This is a Pilot Juice Up 3. So the Juice Up is uh, one of Pilot's gel pens. It's the uh, needle tip gel pen. And uh, it's kind of like an art edition of the G2. There was a Pilot Juice pen, then it got sort of, I don't know if it was replaced or upgraded with the Juice Up, but it was always a single color pen. And now the Juice Up is available in a Juice Up 3. And this, this is the Juice Up 4. Uh, if I'm like, you know, you're doing some traveling or running around, it's really nice to have a multi-pen. If you want a multi-pen, you want one that writes nicely. So a Pilot Juice Up is a really nice way to go. It's very versatile, has a really uh, nice, that needle tip point or needle tip style point. It's not exactly a needle tip. It's uh, slightly modified. And, uh, you know, good legibility, good reliability, fun to use. And then this was a new design. I really like the Juice Up 3 because it has a nice, slim profile. My main complaint with multi-pens is that they get very thick and I find them not to be very comfortable. They, just, they seem like a little ungainly to me. So I don't use them as much as you might expect. But when I find a slim multi-pen like this Juice Up 3, I really do like it. And this is a 0.4 millimeter, so it's good for smaller writing. Juice Up 4 is very similar, it's thicker available in some different colors. I also bought it in the 0.4 millimeter. The standard three has black, blue, red. The four color has black, blue, green, red. So that's the difference there. I would recommend the Juice Up 3. It's a nice pen, it's available now. I think it's relatively new. Retail price is 500 JPY, so about six or $7 in the US. And I think you could find them at uh, a few different retailers, although it is a relatively new pen. All plastic, except for the front piece. Uh, there's like some little bit of color or something shining through here. It's semi-transparent. I don't know, it's just, I think it's just a, a really nice pen and uh, been one of the more interesting multi-pens I've used in a while. So highly recommend it, Juice Up 3. I've also been using this pen a fair bit. This is called the Uniball or Uni Jetstream Stylus. So you can see it has the fuzzy stylus end that'll work with your iPhone or Android or iPad, whatever. Any capacitive touchscreen will work. And this is a twist style multi-pen. You can see right here, it's in between colors, in between black and blue. Twist it, goes to black, blue, and then you can't turn any more past blue if you go in the other direction, black, in between, closed, and then you have your red. So three color, multi-pen, twist style, the Jetstream pens in the Prime series, they do have a twist style three color, or maybe it's a three plus one, I think. Uh, but it's like a 40 or $50 pen. It's much more expensive than this. This is about a, I think a 12 or $15 pen. So it's a nice Jetstream multi-pen. And I think it's all metal. Nice clip. Has this weird fuzzy top I don't use, but it, it does work. I test it out with a phone. And it's a really nice writer. Inside, you can open it up by twisting it in the wrong direction and, and kind of giving it a little bit extra pressure. Standard Jetstream refills. So that's the uh, SX200, I think, or SX80, SX80 probably. So you get that standard Jetstream ink. It's a great writer. And again, this is another good one for traveling or just you don't want to have a lot of pens on you. You get your black, blue, and red colors. Really nice writer. And because it, the Jetstream uses that oil-based ink, it'll write almost anywhere. I, uh, I really do like this one. I think it's a good looking pen. I don't mind the fuzzy thing at the top. I, I don't really use it. The twist action is workable. 
It feels a little bit light. I wish I had a little bit more pressure, but no, no significant complaints with it. And it, it never accidentally closes or anything like that. So it does its job nicely. So I really do uh, like this pen and I would definitely recommend this as well. And I think I have a full review on this one coming if it hasn't hit the channel already. Next up, I have this pen right here. This is called the Wing Sun 3010 or 3010, the 3010. This is one of the Wing Sun fountain pens that you can buy in bulk. And when you buy them, you can buy like a, I think I just bought a 10 pack for about 10 or $12. You can find it on eBay and some other places. And this is a piston filler, all plastic fountain pen. And I have a lot of fountain pens. I have a lot of Chinese made fountain pens. Uh, and I really found that this is one of my favorites. I just, I really love the nib on this one. It has a really nice kind of uh, toothiness to it. Just a, not, a lot of nice feedback. And if, if I'm quiet for a second, you could hear it. And it's just a really nice rider with good feedback. It reminds me of a kind of a platinum, like a platinum 3776, which is a pen that costs I don't know, close to a hundred times more than this. Maybe not a hundred times, maybe like, you know, 50 to 75 times more than this. Uh, but it's a great writer. It's incredibly reliable. I think it's pretty good looking. It's nicely made. It comes with the converter. And I've had this one for a long time, like, I don't know, maybe two years, three years, something like that. And it's just been great. I, I realized that I just grab it a lot and I never really gave it much credit but I've been using it more and more and appreciating it more and more. I just bought a 10 pack off eBay. Uh, this one was colorful. And uh, again, I think I spent for 10 pens or eight pens, it was $10 or 10 pens or $12, something like that. Very reasonable. And uh, if you are trying to figure out the Chinese fountain pens or you want to buy a bunch of fountain pens for cheap and you don't know which way to go, uh, I really, I think my favorite is this Wing Song 3010. Just uh, very plain, but really, uh, really reliable and a nice writer. And I really do like the nib on here. And I believe this nib can be removed and swapped out for any Lamy pen. So I'm thinking about getting some of these nibs and putting them on a Lamy Safari or something like that, which is a body that is, you know, kind of higher end than this body. But I actually really like this one. It has a uh, Twisby style, so a triangular nib, or maybe not Twisby style, similar to the Lamy Safari, the Lamy All-Star. And then it's all, all plastic here. I think you could convert it to be a, uh, an eyedropper if you want. I haven't done that yet, which I've had good luck with these, these converters. So no problems there. And definitely uh, highly recommended, the 3010. As far as general gel pens go, I've been using this. This is a ball sign. Uh, so basically Sakura, the inventors of the gel pen, they have the jelly roll pens. Those are sort of their art series pens. The previous line before they had the jelly roll was called the ball sign. And these are just their, I think it's the same pens that are branded differently. Just a nice gel pen, very reliable, very plain. And if you like a jelly roll, the ball sign is just kind of, I think a, a standard, more business focused model of it. Whereas the jelly roll is kind of more like art and journal inspired kind of more for just uh, more casual use. The ball signs are, I think, for aimed more at business users. I'm not 100% not sure there, but they're essentially, as far as I can tell, the same pen. So uh, I bought these to see if there's any difference, which I do like the jelly rolls, and I don't think there are. So just very nice gel pen, blue, red, black. I think I have a few different colors. No problems at all. Works well, nice color. <clears throat> and we all know Secure is experts at making gel pens. So this is very much in keeping with that. This is called the Zebra Sarasa Grand, and this is the limited edition antique model in the vintage coloring, something like that. I did a full review on this and uh, cool pen. I really like the gold here. I like the vintage colors here. I don't like the shiny gold at the top, but if you wanna get this cool antique to finish gold in a Zebra Sarasa Grand, which is a great pen, these are available now I'm not sure how long they will be available, but I bought a few just because I really do like the color scheme. And the Zebra Sarasa Grand is such a great gel pen that when they come out with a new edition, I, I pretty much feel like I, uh, I feel compelled to buy it, like I owe it to Zebra. This one has a nice 
green ink, kind of like a, a forest green or jungle green or something like that, kind of a green blue that, uh, that I like. Again, the problem, I think this edition definitely has some problems as people have pointed out in my video review that I posted, I don't know, a week or so ago, but overall it's a nice pen and I recommend it. I, I prefer the standard vintage series. You don't get the gold, but it's overall a better looking pen, but these are very, very cool. So that's the Sarasa Grand Vintage Edition Antique Lemon Edition, something like that. If you Google around for it, you'll, you'll find it. They're available now. Lastly, I've been playing around with a few different pens from this company called Penco. Uh, they, I'm not sure exactly what their deal is, but they have a few different pens on the market now, like this plastic one, and I just bought this one. I haven't really played with much. And uh, they make a bunch of different pens. I've only known them for their smaller pens, but I think they have a full different line, a full line rather. And this is their little bullet style pen. Uh, not like the Fisher bullet, but the concept is the same. It's a small pen that you could post to get to be, uh, you know, not quite a full size pen, but pretty close. This one I think is maybe $10, $8, or something like that. I believe it's called the Penco Perfection. And I've just been using it, playing around, trying to figure out what the deal with this company is. I, uh, I don't love it, honestly. I think it's fine. I find it to be, it's way too short like this. Posted, it's okay. Uh, it's a little bit, not like unbalanced. I just, I don't know. I don't think it's a very good looking pen. And as far as writing goes, it's totally fine. It's just not very exceptional. It's just something you would throw in your bag. At least for me, it's something you throw in a bag and not really think about until you're at the post office or you just needed to write something down. It's a fine writer, nothing exceptional. It's not particularly fun to use. And I don't know, it's not really notable to me. So I don't really have too much thoughts about it. One thing that really bothered me from a uh, pocket or, you know, it's supposed to be a pocketable pen or something you throw in a bag is that this, they have like squared off edges on this clip here. And I feel like I've caught myself on it a few times and they're kind of sharp. So if you're putting it in and out of your pocket a lot or putting it in your bag, the last thing you want on it is sharp edges. So it's nice that they put a clip here, the Fisher Space Pen. A lot of times you don't see it with a clip. A lot of pocketable pens like a Caveco or Cavico, you don't put a clip on because you don't want something, you know, stopping it from going in and out of your pocket or scratching up your laptop or your phone or whatever. They have a clip here that's not removable. And of course it's sharp and it catches on things. So I think that was a strategic misstep, but it does click in nicely, has a nice click action. I kind of feel like I like playing with it. Inside is just a little, I think a D1 style refill. So that's the D1 refill. This is the holder. So you get almost any refill you want in there, which is good. I haven't changed it out, but at the end of the day, it's just kind of a standard ballpoint refill. And uh, it goes into this Penco Perfection body. It, this is things fine, but there's so many good pocket pens out there that I would not recommend this one. So uh, yeah, that's a quick look at what I've been writing with in March, 2022. Thanks for watching.